Uh, do you guys need food or water or anything? Oh yeah, that's right. Your bees. Good afternoon, beekeepers and bee enthusiasts. How are you doing? It's another great day at the farm. And we're hanging out. We are in early December, y'all, and it is cold. It's about 32 degrees out here, uh, but the sun is shining, so it's not too bad, but I definitely got my jacket on. And yeah, we're, we're doing so good, and we hope you, your friends, and your family are doing good as well. And we've got an excellent topic for you planned today. And of course, today we're talking about honeybees are not livestock. Now, livestock generally refers to animals that are domesticated and kept for agricultural purposes. And while honeybees do produce honey and pollination services for certain people, they are far from domesticated. And in fact, honeybees, the way they act in the wild is not really different from how they act if they're in a hive constructed by a human being. They basically carry the same traits and do the same thing. So today we're going to talk about what makes them so different from domesticated animals and how they're able to really just do things on their own and they're just very capable of managing things themselves. And it's gonna be a wonderful video and we know you're gonna enjoy it. So without further ado, let's break right into it. So our family has kept farm animals for the better part of two decades now. We've had horses, cows, pigs, goats, chickens, dogs, all kinds of animals and it has been fun and they've all served their purpose in one way or another but one thing for, is for sure about these animals is that they require us to babysit them all the time every single day we have to make sure they have adequate food we got to make sure their water is good their shelter is taken care of they're they're not sick or anything like that it's it's constant management and a lot of domesticated farm animals these days, they have become reliant on humans for their survival. And they would not be able to survive out in the wild on their own. Now, how does this differ from honeybees? Well, of course, honeybees are perfectly capable of managing things on their own. And if we take food, for example, if you remember that honeybees produce honey from the spring, summer, and fall, so that they have food in the winter time when there's no nectar outside. They, if they are healthy and they're in good shape, they will always be able to get a good amount of food for themselves and they will do just fine. And it's really no big deal. They don't require to be fed. They don't require sugar water or any of that stuff. They are perfectly capable of managing things on their own if they're a healthy colony. And some people would say, well, Wes, would you just let your bees die if you didn't feed them? Well, when it comes to honeybees, we want the best genetics in our apiary. We want honeybees that can survive on their own. So we do not intervene in their lives if they are not capable of producing on their own. You know, we catch swarms. If they're healthy, they can produce food for themselves. And we just don't overmanage them or anything like that. We kind of let them do things on their own. And of course, the same is true for their water situation. They do not require us to put a bucket of water out for them or do any of that stuff. They are perfectly capable of finding water. They will fly out and just look for creeks such as this or other water sources, and that's how they'll get their water. So honeybees are perfectly capable of getting their own food and their own water, and in those aspects, they can definitely take care of themselves. So let's talk about the living situation for honeybees. So of course, there are honeybees that live in the wild and they live in trees and abandoned buildings and all kinds of places like that and other locations. And then there's the honeybees that live in man-made hives that we provide for them, such as the land's hive. And all these things are fine and dandy. But two things are true about honeybees. One is most colonies every single year will cast a swarm which consists about two thirds of the colony and they will go search for a new home. So they basically say, so long and thanks for all the fish, and they're on their way out, and they're gonna go find another location to live, you know, and a lot of the times it's not successful, but they always send out swarms to go search for new homes. So they're basically saying like, hey, this, this house has been great, 
but we got to go search for other great places. And so they're, they're always going and looking for new places to live. And they will do this every year with swarms. And so the other thing is true about honeybees is that if their living situation is bad, like let's say they're staying in a man-made hive and it's starting to cave in or it's getting filled with water or anything, you know, it's got issues, they will elect to abscond. And what abscond means is where basically the entire colony makes an emergency exit and goes somewhere else. And a lot of the times when they leave like this, they don't survive, but they're basically saying like, hey, we're not gonna live if we stay in this beat up hive, so we're gonna go search for a whole nother home. And so honeybees, they cast out swarms every year to search for new homes. If their living situation is bad, they will go and find a new home and they will do these things all on their own. Now that is different from a domesticated animal where if they have a shelter and the shelter fails and there's issues with it, then the animal will in a lot of cases die. And so they are completely relying on human beings to maintain their shelters and make sure they're you know, well taken care of because if their shelters are bad, if there's anything wrong with their living situation, they're, they're pretty much not gonna make it. And that's just how it is for basically all domesticated anim animals. They really require human beings to make sure they're taken care of. So we all know that with domesticated animals and livestock, a lot of farmers will take a male and a female cow or a male and a female horse, they'll breed them together so that they can get the best traits for the offspring. And this has been happening for a very long time. It's not rocket science. I don't need to explain it any further. But with honeybees, this is a lot different. Now, it is true that a lot of people out there are trying to get the best traits for honeybee queens. And they are artificially inseminating queens to try to get traits such as disease resistance or cold survivability or less aggressiveness, all kinds of things people are trying to get into that perfect honeybee. But of course, we know that this is a pointless effort because when it comes to how honeybees act, in the swarm season, the old queen will base that, you, that perfect queen that you've got the perfect traits now, she will lay new queens and then she will exit the hive and search for a new home with two thirds of the colony. And then the new queens will fight over each other until there's one surviving new queen. And while that new queen might have the genetics of the old perfect queen, what she's gonna do now is she's gonna go mate with 10 to 15 drones all over the area and basically get genetics of bees all over the place. So you trying to get the perfect bee, it's already done. I mean, they're, already, they're always switching out queens and the new queens are always mating with 10 to 15 drones out in the area. So there's really no point in trying to get the perfect genetics and honeybees, and all of them have become more or less like mutts. Now, that's true for the genetics. Now, as far as medications go, you know, a lot of people, when it comes to domesticated animals and, and livestock, they're always giving their livestock uh, medications and stuff to make sure they're okay. And a lot of people preach in beekeeping that you've got to do the same with bees. And one thing that kind of inspired me to make this video was that a lot of people have come to me and said, well, Wes, you know, bees are livestock and you wouldn't let your cattle die. So why are you going to let your bees die from disease or anything like that? But I just tell them all the time that bees are perfectly able to do things on their own. A strong colony will have good disease resistance and they will be able to survive all kinds of sicknesses. And they will also be able to take care of pests inside the hot. So honeybees are a lot different from those animals in that you can just let them do their thing and they're perfectly capable of managing their colony and making sure the disease does not take over. So let's talk about another way and how honeybees differ from domesticated animals and general livestock. And that is that honeybees require little intervention when staying in man-made hives and they require no intervention if they're living in the wild. Now, we've said it before, you know, when it comes to our bees, we only go in our hives twice a year. We go in the spring, whenever the honey flow is starting, and we put in the honey frames, and we make sure the hive is good and the bees are okay, and we close up the hive, 
and then we wait until October. October comes, we go into the hive, we pull the honey frames out, make sure the bees are okay, winterize the hive, close it up, they're good to go. And then from October to spring, like right now, we're not doing anything with our bees. They are managing on their own, they're doing things just fine, and they're fully capable of going without having human beings go into them all the time. And a lot of beekeepers out there teach that you gotta get in those hives every week, every two weeks, and you gotta totally disturb your bees and just get in their lives and interrupt things and disturb them. And then you gotta look at the queen and look at the drones and look at the brood and all that stuff. All that stuff, you just don't need to do it, okay? We've managed just fine in our apiary by doing very little with our bees and they've survived just fine. And it's, it's been a lot less work for us too. So that's been really nice. And so honeybees do not require a lot of human intervention. They're fully capable of surviving on their own. And of course this differs from domesticated animals and livestock in that these animals that we have, we have to manage them every single day. I've already said we've got to check their food and their water every day, but we got to make sure their shelter's okay. You know, we got to make sure they're not sick. You know, we got to make sure they're doing okay. You know, there's, there's just all kinds of things we have to do every single day to ensure that they survive. And if we didn't do it, then they wouldn't live very long. So it's, it's a lot of babysitting and intervention when it comes to domesticated animals, but it's nice when it comes to honeybees. We just don't have to do all those extra steps and we can let them do things on their own, which they're fully capable of. So as someone who has kept farm animals for quite some time, I can tell you that standard domesticated animals are a lot different from honeybees and that honeybees are not livestock. When it comes to honeybees, they are perfectly capable of managing things on their own. They can take care of their own shelter. They can take care of their water situation. They can take care of their food. They can manage disease. They can do all these things on their own with little to no intervention from human beings. And they're perfectly capable of surviving without humans at all. So honeybees are very sustainable. And if there's one thing I want the beekeepers out there to take from this is you don't need sophisticated hive systems or excessive monitoring or super detailed crazy tools or anything like that. You don't need all that extra stuff. You can let your bees do their thing on their own. And I promise you they can do really fine. We've been hands off for over five years now and just been amazed at what the bees have been able to do on their own. And it's been really cool. So that about wraps up our video. We hope you enjoyed. And until next time, we'll see you soon.